If you go to the Small Business Administration site, it tells you how to start a business or build your business in 10 steps. So I'm gonna do a series to break down each step for you. Now, actually it's a lot to read, but I'm gonna break it down for you so you don't have to. Hello, my name is Dr. M. Stollard and let's begin. If you're feeling pressure, or if you feel like you don't have enough time, I got you, so let's do this. The first step, according to the Small Business Administration site, when you're trying to build your business is to conduct market research. Conduct market research. I think it's a very interesting step, um, a very interesting first step, but there's some validity to it, right? So let's break it down. So if you take the word market research, the market is just a fancy term for potential customers, right? Market is a fancy term for potential customers. Now, research is a word that kind of scares people off, right? They think about research, like, you know what? I don't want to deal with that at all. But market research, when you put them together, market research tells you if there's some validity to the, your business idea or your entrepreneurial idea or the direction you're planning to go, right? So let's define it. Market research is the act or process of gathering information about a target customer, market, or organization, all right? And I'll say it again, the act or process of gathering information about a target customer, market, or organization. See, the purpose is to determine the viability or success of a product or service. What's the likelihood that it's gonna work out in the end? That's the benefit and the purpose of market research. When you are doing market research, you're learning who your customers are, who is your competition, right? You're learning about the industry as a whole. So there are a few questions you need to answer when it comes to conducting market research. So first is demand. Is there a need or a want for your product or business or your service? Is there a need or want for this, right? Um, the second one is, what's the size of your market? How many people would actually be interested in your product or service, right? What is the size of your market? You know what? The next question is, where are these potential customers, right? Location, where are these potential customers? Where do your customers live? Um, where do they reside? Where do they go to work? Where do they spend time? Where do they hang out, right? Um, these are important questions that you need to know. Where can your business reach, right? Um, in some cases, where your customer, your audience are, that could be one location, and then you may have a whole batch of people sitting in a different location, and that's completely fine. It's called a good problem to have, right? So if you have sold a product, to anyone in your network, your, your customers, your target audience, right? You want to find out where your customers came from and where do they reside, right? Same thing if you're providing a service. Where do your customers came from, right? Where do your customers came from and where do they reside, right? So again, next fancy term, market saturation. In other words, how many people are already doing what you're doing? Market saturation. How many people are already doing what you're doing? How similar options are already available for your consumers, right? So when you think about it that way, um, it's important to try to stand out. You want to make yourself that it's unique so your customers and your clients and potential buyers can't turn away from you, right? But when we're talking about market saturation, right? how similar options are ready and available to your customers, right? Now you have to take a minute to determine how you want to stand out. What is gonna make your business or organization different? This is referred to as positioning, okay? Now the final piece, you need to determine what others are willing to pay for your kind of product or your service. What are other consumers willing to pay for your product or your service, right? So a simple example, if you're selling burgers and fries, it would help to learn what your competition is selling their burgers and fries from, right? You don't necessarily want to compete with McDonald's, that's a billion dollar company, and they have stores all over the world. You want maybe the mom and pop shop or a smaller franchise. You want, if they're selling burgers and fries, you wanna know what they're charging for, so you would know to try to charge at least much, right? Again, the benefit of market research is to determine if the idea that you have is actually viable, 
right? So let me tell you how to find this information. First, you can hire somebody. <laughs> Second, um, you can start hiring somebody to help you do this. And third, you know, you obviously you can do it for yourself, right? So this depends on what you're looking for. I'm just gonna mention a few different sites. Um, I'll put some links down below, but you know, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, that might be an option for you. The, actually the Small Business Association.gov site, the, NI, the NAICS site as well. These are actual sites that can help you um, in your search um, when it comes to marketing research, right? The last little tidbit for you. There is a process to conduct market research. There is a process to conduct market research. And the first step, right? The first step or the framework, right? Is to define the problem. What's the problem you're trying to solve, right? What is the problem you're trying to solve? Number two, develop the research plan, right? What are you gonna research first? What are you gonna look up first? Third, second, third, and fourth, okay? Next is the execution mode. You're gonna research the plan, but then you're gonna collect relevant information, right? You're gonna collect relevant information. That may include speaking to people, speaking to your consumer's clients or your consumer's buyers, you know, um, depending on how you're coming across them, that might be an option for you. And then step four, develop your findings. You did all this research, right? You did all this homework. What were your findings? What did you learn from that process, okay? And step five, take marketing action. That means to launch your campaign, right? Launch your campaign, launch your website, launch your social media page, so let people know that you are ready and open for business. So once you've done all that, then what's next, right? You're gonna comb through all that information that you've gathered and you're gonna make a decision. The decision is for you to decide, should you move forward with that business idea or not, right? So I'm Dr. M. Stollard, entrepreneurial strategist, helping organizations and you solopreneurs out there build your business and cultivate brand clarity. Let me know if you have any questions.